counting votes in Colorado, then counting them again by hand, trying to dispel conspiracy theories with facts. A candidate running for Congress stops long enough for a mugshot. Perhaps voters tired of red versus blue will prefer a candidate in orange. It looks like one of the world's worst lawn ornaments. It's helping people living near the Suncor refinery keep track of what's in the air. And I know people have made the comment that I'm kind of Olympic out. Why are so many people opting out of watching the Winter Olympics? Maybe everybody's just doing them at home instead. That's next, but before. All right, so stop me if you've heard this before. Republican elected to oversee elections in our state is being sued by our Democratic Secretary of State. We are not talking about Colorado's most famous example, Mace County Clerk Tina Peters again. Nope, now it is Elbert County Clerk Dallas Schroeder facing a court date because he won't answer questions about a potential security breach of his county's election equipment. Democratic Secretary of State Jenna Griswold wants to know who specifically has copies of Elbert County's voting machine server, and she wants those copies returned. Clerk Schroeder admitted to making a forensic image of everything on the election server and sharing it with two people who are not authorized to have it. Election rigging conspiracy theorists have claimed that they have clerks working on the inside in Colorado trying to prove the election fraud they haven't been able to find. So you know that Colorado's elections are regularly audited for accuracy and security. And in Mesa County, where Clerk Peters cast out on the election results and is now under investigation for breaching the voting system, they have recounted last year's election results. And they say the Dominion voting machines counted the results accurately. They've been audited twice even counted by hand. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger shows us why we may not want our elections counted by hand. After the November election in Mesa County, which was counted by Dominion voting machines, the county commissioners audited the results. First, they had the ballots counted by hand. Then the ballot images were run through clear ballot counting machines, which look similar to this video from Clear Ballot's website. Clear Ballot, by the way, is one of Dominion's competitors. Is there any reason Mesa County needs to do away with Dominion? Uh, absolutely not. The forensic audit showed that the Dominion system counted accurately. The hand count showed that the Dominion system counted accurately. And now the clear ballot tabulation showed that the Dominion system tabulated accurately. Former Republican Secretary of State Wayne Williams oversaw the Mesa County election instead of Tina Peters. He also oversaw the two audits. In one ballot issue, Proposition 120, out of 52,000 votes cast, Dominion and Clear Ballot counted four votes differently. The hand count had nine votes counted different than Dominion and 13 votes different than Clear Ballot. The hand count is less accurate than a machine count. There were times that we would go back and have a different team uh, hand count the same ballots and they would come up with a different result. Uh, that required us then to take a look at it more closely. This type of audit is important because there's a bill to change how Colorado runs elections. Republican State Representative Ron Hanks, who's also running for U.S. Senate, has a bill at the Capitol to have Colorado count all elections by hand in 24 hours. There are members of your own party that are calling for hand counting elections with results known by the next day. Is that the way to go? It is impossible to hand count elections in a large jurisdiction and have results known the next day. There does not need to be a drastic change to how Colorado conducts elections. Uh, there are certainly improvements that can and should be made. Those ideas Williams just referenced uh, are not about counting, but rather process when voters should be taken off the voter rolls and not sent ballots. Uh, Kyle, the cost of these two audits combined, $100,000 to tell Mesa County residents what they already knew. So uh, obviously we don't ever want the votes to be off by one, but we also know anybody who remembers, you know, hanging Chad from Florida, you know, looking at it like this, mm -hmm. knows that sometimes it's difficult to discern what the voter wants. So what happens when you end up with a race where they say, yeah, this is probably off by one or two? It's, that shows accuracy, that you have some human error when you're looking at what did they intend to do. But if we get into a margin of error, like if, you, if it's to a point where it's a drastic difference or it's within that margin of error where there's an automatic recount, then you get into issues like now we got to go very closely, run them through the machines again, yep. look at them by hand again. And I, that, that could get a little This is just showing, like if you're four off, if you have this service or this service, you're, yeah. you're satisfied with what you got. Marshall, thank you. Churches have become happy hosts for Colorado's political extremism these days, while one church in Castle Rock tries to distance itself from calls for a hanging during a political event last week. Another church is preparing to host election rigging conspiracy theorists this coming weekend. 
On Saturday, the Colorado Election Integrity 2.0 hearing will be held at Central Christian Church in Denver. Uh, despite the hearing word, this is not like an official government function. Uh, this is a, a chance for, quote, citizens and subject matter experts to have the opportunity to voice their concerns and provide evidence in regards to irregularities in the 2020 election. Guest speakers at that event include Republican state rep and U.S. Senate candidate Ron Hanks, who, of course, urged foreign governments to interfe intervene in the 2020 election to prevent President Biden from taking office. The event will also feature former CU Boulder visiting conservative scholar John Eastman. He's the man who helped advise the Trump legal team on how they could overturn the results of an American election. Both Hanks and Eastman were at this gathering, held by a group called FEC United last week. It was at a church in Castle Rock, where one speaker, Sean Smith, suggested Secretary of State Jenna Griswold be hanged for treason, a suggestion that was met with applause. Town Hall was at The Rock Church in Castle Rock. Marshall Zellinger stopped by the church last week and asked the pastor if he supported hanging the Secretary of State and if he would have this group back to his church. The pastor said he was busy and he'd answer the questions later. Well, Pastor Mike Polemus sent us a statement last night. It reads in part, The Rock Church opens up their facility to many outside organizations for events throughout the week. The views and statements made by these outside organizations do not reflect the position of the Rock Church. It continued, the rock in no way supports violence, threats, slander, or hatred of any kind. A candidate running for Congress caught the immediate interest of one group, law enforcement officers, who were looking for Joshua Jared Rodriguez on an open warrant. The Democrat running for Colorado's newly formed 8th Congressional District had been charged with felonies including identity theft and attempting to influence a public servant. It's not clear if he's turned himself in or if law enforcement caught up with him during his campaign. In 2018, we reported here that a woman in Arvada had claimed Rodriguez had made a fake endorsement for her for his city council campaign. Full disclosure, Rodriguez then sued me and Nine News' parent company for our reporting. His lawsuit was voluntarily dismissed. Rodriguez is one of several Democrats running in the 8th Congressional District, and there will be a crowded GOP primary as well. So here we are closing in on two years since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in our state. As we talked about earlier this week, it appears that we're finally on the back end of that Omicron wave that peaked in de uh, January and December. Today, state public health leaders were asked, what are their big takeaways nearly 24 months into the worst public health crisis of their careers? First and foremost, the virus is unpredictable. Uh, and it, it, it has really been, uh, you know, leading the show here. We have lost, we've lost a lot of Coloradans, uh, and we have seen enormous impacts on our healthcare system, on, on our schools. Uh, it has been an incredibly difficult two years, uh, but I am incredibly proud of the way our entire state has come together uh, to meet the challenges. Here's where we are now. Colorado's COVID positivity rate is dropping like a stone. 6.4% of tests have come back hot over the last seven days. That is 20% of where we were during the Omicron peak at the beginning of January. Suncor got in trouble for polluting the air. And now that oil refinery on the north side of Denver is monitoring the air quality. They've been testing the air since this past summer. And today they explained how it works. No amount of scientific explanation is going to convince some neighbors near that refinery that they can ever trust Suncor. Here's Katie Eastman. It's, it's here for two weeks. Most people would say absolutely not to a giant trailer that incessantly beeps parked in their backyard. Not Lucy Molina. I, I can't even believe I'm saying it right now, that it's in my backyard. That's why it's, it's in my backyard, you guys. It's it is an air quality monitor placed here by the nonprofit Cultivando. I, I kept looking outside my window like, is that really there? They are conducting a year-long air quality investigation. That's Suncor over there, so there's some of those, all those things in the back. They want to find out what the Suncor oil refinery down the street been putting into the air. I mean, it smells like rotten eggs every day here. You know what I mean? Uh, is that normal? No, it's not normal. It's been allowed <laughs> to become normal. What might be an eyesore for some is progress for Molina. I hope it tells us the truth. Uh, and what do we need to protect ourselves from? Suncor says they are telling the truth too. 
with their own air quality monitoring. Compared to the acceptable level of benzene in the air, what we are seeing is this. They hired a third party company to do the work and the VP of the refinery says they can't interfere with results that might not be favorable to Suncor. Suncor doesn't touch this program. We don't do the measurements. We don't do the reporting. We don't provide that. I'm hoping through that that people will build trust in this data and understand it. It's like an insult. But since Suncor has violated public health standards in the past, Melina will only be looking at the data coming from her backyard. Self-regulation doesn't work. We don't trust them and we don't trust our own government. And Suncor is actually the one funding the air quality monitors for Cultivando as well. It's part of a $9 million settlement with the State Department of Public Health and Environment over air pollution violations. Kyle. Trust is a hard thing to regain once lost. It right. is. Katie Eastman, thank you. Olympic viewership is down this year. Is it pandemic fatigue, doping scandals, threat of world war, or is it something much more simple causing people to tune out? I think Coloradians prefer to do it as opposed to watch it. Maybe there's something to that because you keep sending us your at-home Olympics and whatever this is, next. So this is awkward coming from the Olympic channel and all, but... Uh, not as many people are watching the Winter Olympics this year. Maybe it's the Russian doping scandal. Maybe it's Americans' views on China. Maybe it's a lack of real electric U.S. stars outside Michaela Schifrin. Maybe it's that we just finished the last Olympics, like, I don't know, a week ago. Our Mike Grady looks at Olympic interest and fatigue. No, no, no. <laughs> at the Denver Curling Center, there's a lot going on during the Winter Olympics. It's an exciting time for us because uh, it generates a lot of enthusiasm around the, even the non-curling community. But you know what's not here? Civil rights controversies, doping scandals, annoying commercials. Nationally, reports show that Olympic viewing has significantly dropped. People have made the comment that I'm kind of Olympic out because we had all of the summer that we had this. And I just say, you know, sit back and enjoy it. Three-time national curling champion Pam Finch isn't burned out on the Winter Games. I enjoy being a spectator. I just really enjoy being a spectator and being able to admire the accomplishments. Yeah, go ahead. Brian Brown is quite invested in the curling outcome. I know I sit at the home on the couch and I'm timing. But it's everything surrounding the sports that has some people uninterested in the Beijing Games. I think there are a variety of reasons that uh, the ratings for the Olympics uh, may be down. Sean Worthy is a psychology professor at MSU Denver. I think there are... Uh, broad political reasons, uh, such as them occurring in China. Americans expect American athletes to dominate. I think Coloradians prefer to do it as opposed to watch it. <laughs> you know? I thought I had more on that last one, but... Pam and Brian say forget all that and just take in the events. Sit back and enjoy. Absolutely. It's still called the game, right? It, it's still a game. Breaking? That's okay. We're going to get a little wick off of this and... Plug that gap for next. That works. I'm Mike Grady. Good shot. Good shot. U.S. men's curling plays for the bronze medal tomorrow night. Your homegrown Olympic exploits never get old, and that's why we have this segment called Colorado's At Home Olympics, but not the Olympics, because if we called it the Olympics and we get sued. They, they say curling is difficult, uh, but Peter's in the fourth grade. He seems to have the hang of it. He was watching the Olympics with his family in Mead and decided he'd give it a try. Peter's parents are probably just glad that uh, he's actually mopping and he doesn't know it. Uh, curling life in plastic, it's fantastic. Uh, Sharon in Littleton sent us this not at all creepy stop motion film of a curling match between two oddly similar looking athletes. One more week, uh, weekday of Winter Olympic competitions means just one more day to share your at home Olympic attempts. Send videos to next at 9news.com or give us a shout on Twitter with the hashtag HeyNext. Get in the videos before the finish line here. A school district says the company hired help turn them around wasted their money. And what do you say? Are you impressed? Because this driver clearly wants you to be impressed. An Olympic medal for attention getting next. The Adams 14 school district was in such tough shape it brought in an outside management company. And now they're accusing that management company of misusing district funds. 
MGT was selected to help run the schools in the district in 2019 after the state told Adams 14 to bring in somebody else to help improve years of poor academic performance. According to a third party audit just released by the school today, MGT then went and paid other contractors to do work similar to what they were supposed to be doing themselves. Adams 14 is trying to cut ties with MGT, but they need the state's permission to do that. The State Board of Ed said they first wanted to see the audit. MGT released a statement today basically saying that outsourcing some of this work is not a big deal. Sunshine today, but not an overly warm day with afternoon highs in the 20s and 30s. We'll see those numbers climb into the 40s tomorrow, even with a weak system to our north that may bring a little bit of mountain snow. Fair skies tonight, a few high clouds as a weak front clips northern Colorado tomorrow, but we're on our way to a warming trend that will see us close to 60 over the weekend. Fair skies in 20 tonight with light winds. Tomorrow's high in the mid to upper 40s. Mid 50s with sunshine on Saturday, close to 60 on Sunday. Snow returns late Monday into Tuesday with bitter cold highs midweek. Highs in the teens Tuesday and Wednesday with lows below zero. The Arctic cold about to take hold again. No Olympic athletes from Iceland are competing today. So that means that we all get to cheer on our favorite Olympic underdog while they get a day of rest. That, as they say in Iceland, is the raisin at the end of the hot dog. It's an actual saying. Rusinan e Pasandanum, the raisin at the end of the hot dog. Something that's unexpectedly good. Like when two dozen next viewers got Icelandic flags in the mail because I accidentally ordered 25 when I just wanted one. Rusandanum e Pilsandanum. Carl got his raisin at the end of the hot dog. Excellent flag waving form, Carl. That will propel Iceland to their first Winter Games medal. Spring got her flag in the mail from me just as she was sitting down to watch Snorri Ether Einarsson in the 15-kilometer classic. He did not medal, but he had some random fans in Colorado cheering him on. The raisin at the end of the hot dog, indeed. If you need to use the four-wheel drive just to park, there's a decent chance you've crossed the line. That and your feedback next. Hey guys, next producer Kevin Larson back once again. If Mono Bob is a one woman bobsled, what do you call a two woman bobsled? Does Tom Green have the answer? Probably not, but he will have more on an American woman looking to medal in both events. Tonight on the Olympic Zone at 5.30. You might be the king of parking lot Snow Mountain, but brother, you've crossed the line. Jeep owner needs that $8 a day parking lot off Bannock near the state capitol. And when the spaces were gone, well, that's why you buy a Jeep, right? Put that four-wheel drive to the test and summoned the mound of snow covering the space. Now, technically, I don't think that this is crossing the line. Look at that shot. That's beautiful. That's picturesque. Thanks to Caroline for sharing this. She said the scene just made her, made her go into jury duty a little bit easier than it would have been otherwise. Lots of feedback from you on why you're not watching the Olympics this year, and I hear it. It all makes sense. Catherine says, we are not actively watching the Olympics because of the genocide with the Uyghurs. Paul wrote in to say that NBC made it more political than sports. He said he understands, but doesn't feel that Olympics are the place. And Craig said that doping was his concern, and he said the easy solution is to truly ban the Russians. He said, and I don't think that Iceland dopes its athletes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Iceland is not doping their athletes. Have you, have you seen them? I mean, they're out there, they're working their hardest, and they're finishing in like 20th place. But you know what? That hard work and our fandom, it's a raisin at the end of the hot dog. See you next time.